I am a heliophysicist, which means a uh, scientist who studies the sun and the solar wind. I happen to be the chief of the Heliospheric Physics Laboratory here at NASA Goddard. I sat down with the mission scientist for NASA's Parker Solar Probe, Dr. Adam Sabo. Dr. Sabo tells me that Parker's solar probe has been 50 years in the making. Uh, when NASA was just starting, in order to understand the acceleration, the solar wind is the expanding atmosphere of the sun. It, it's the, the corona that we see during solar eclipses that starts its life with moving just very slowly and all of a sudden it becomes supersonic and super hot, a million degree in temperature. We knew this was happening, but we didn't understand why. So NASA very early on realized that, well, we will just have to go there. Problem is that it's really hot there. Then we built Parker Solar Probe, launched it six years ago in 2018. We had to use Venus seven times each time going by Venus to break a little bit so that we can fall a little bit closer to the sun. So it took six years to get to this point. On the morning of December 24th, Christmas Eve. We will be finally at our closest point to the sun, more than 20 times closer to the sun than Earth is well within the orbit of Mercury. No other mission got anywhere near to resolve this last big outstanding scientific questions that we have. The of the sun is about four and a half thousand degrees, pretty hot. But when it, you start climbing out to the corona, with the area, the atmosphere that we see in the solar eclipses, the temperature shoots up to a million degrees degrees, which is not normally what happens. And the technology needed? The development of a thermal shield. It's a big slab of carbon-carbon fiber structure, in a foam structure in front, that the front of it is two and a half thousand degrees, but the back side is down to 85, basically room temperature, where we can use ordinary electronics and instrumentation without fear of melting it. Besides the heat shield, which is the material science completely new, was not possible till recently. The other one is the solar panels. We circulate water out to the backside of the solar panels and then back to behind the heat shield where it can radiate the temperature, the heat away. Another one is automation. The spacecraft has to be able to fly itself adjusting its orbit and orientation. As far as we are concerned, no more Venus encounters. We just stay in the same elliptical or elongated orbit. Our estimate is that we have more than 10 years worth of solar power too available. So we are hoping to keep on going at least another decade. For more information, visit nasa.gov Parker. I'm Ashley Quintana, News 5.